uh, our next uh, presentation will be given by Piotr Padlewski, uh, whose hobbies are uh, compiler optimization and C++. During the summer, his work at Google on the virtualization in Clang and link time optimization at, at LLVM. Now he leads a small team uh, in the company called IIIT, working on Clang tidy related projects. Also, uh, he's an uh, organizer of Ro v uh, Warsaw, C++ user group, so quite a busy man, but still is able to uh, find some free time to enjoy riding motorcycles or playing drums, and today he will try to convince you to like something that is quite often considered rather scary. So his Piotr Padlewski in Undefined Behavior is Awesome, Understanding C++ Guarantees and Optimizations Limitations. Please give a warm welcome to Piotr Padlewski. Okay, thank you very much. So starting, who, who agrees with the, with the title? Who thinks that undefined behavior is awesome? Okay, no, not mo maybe most, but like, uh, at wh who thinks that the compiler job is to, is to, uh, is to find out if it's, like if, it's, if it's awesome or not? It's like, oh, not quite. Okay, so, so first a little bit about me, and then we'll move to the topic. So. Uh, I'm currently working on uh, uh, C++ tooling on the Clang Tidy, and I'm pursuing my uh, bachelor. And I was working on the LVM virtualization and and final TO. So if you if you have some questions for me after the talk, uh, but firstly we need to start by defining uh, uh, by mo by defining some some terms. Uh, so implementation beha defined behavior. So basically. Uh, everything depends on the platform, and it has to be documented. So, for example, the size of size t, right? If it can be a long, it could be a unsigned long. It just it, it just in in implementation defined. It has to be documented. Other surprising thing like number of a bits in a long or number of a bits in a byte. Like Sander doesn't even say that it has to be eight. It has to be it could be eleven. Or something. Uh, I never saw a machine that has any an, any other number, but standard is not a document to define such things. Okay. Second thing, as unspecified behavior. So this is a little bit more scary because the behavior of the program varies between the implementation, and it, it doesn't have to be documented. So, for example, the order of evaluation, right? Uh, we could evaluate bar first, we could evaluate bus. And uh, the other scary thing is that the compiler can choose, like can flip a coin for each call and find out like, okay, in this call I will evaluate it in this order. In, and the second one in the other order. So it's, it's not like it has to, be, uh, has to be the same. Or the other thing, like if we compare two string literals. And then we are moving to, to our star, which is undefined behavior. So basically, there is no restriction of the behavior of the program, right? And because there is no restriction of the program and the behavior is undefined, then compiler can choose whatever it likes to choose. So it, it can, we, can, we can treat it as a promise to the compiler that something won't happen. And um, so but what can happen after hitting undefined behavior, right? You, you probably heard about nasal demons. Right, the demons will come up of your nose. Your cat getting pregnant, so on. This is like, I mean, undefined behavior is is really scary, but it's not that bad. So, like in te in theory, your program could do anything, right? But in practice, like, it's not gonna format your hard drive. It's like, m maybe if you are writing a software to format your hard drive, then the odds are much higher. And, and you have undefined behavior to call some function, but sh normally it shouldn't be. So I will show you first some boring undefined behaviors, and I think those are boring because uh, if a compiler cannot do any magic with them. So, like for example, naming variables starting with underscore, or defining function names with std. You cannot. You, so you can. Def uh, you can specialize uh, things in an but only if they are user-defined. 
So for example, you cannot specialize a CD hash of a CD pair of int int. And of course, Sanar doesn't uh, specialize it either. So those those are mostly like Sanar tr trying to be uh, to work everywhere and like there there is th there is many things that could break if uh, we could use variables starting with underscore because so Sanar is trying to to have some space of names that knows that no no nobody is using and if someone would start using uh, if you would use variables starting with underscore, then like probably nothing will happen. But like if you will be very unlucky and you would use a macro that is also used in a mm, the, the macro with the same name that is used somewhere in the in the STL and you would define it before including it, or the other way around, you would use a macro defined in STL, and uh, then your program can can do some weird weird things and we we don't want to like think about this we just need to have some some space to to put the variables all things like calling delete free after new it's like we we all know that this is a proper way to do it but like on ev almost every platform it's going to work because it's it's pro it's pos it, it, it's it's defined in in the same way okay so let's move to some more, in, more interesting undefined behaviors. Like the, refer the referencing null pointer, or using initialized values or interior overflows. So those are more interesting because optimizer can actually do some optimizations based on that. So for example, if I have x, like simple math, I know that this thing should be always greater than, than, x, than x, right? And the optimizer will, will will assume this, it will change it to true. But it couldn't do it if it would be unsigned int. And this is because uh, overflow is defined, right? So this x, x plus 1 could overflow and it could, could have a smaller value than x. And it wouldn't be true for all the cases. And um, this, this, this must, might sound like a boring case, like, right? Because, you know, how many times you see code like this? But it actually matters to loops. So, like, oh, I ha actually have a have a bug here. This should be i plus two here, but whatever. Uh, so, if 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 I have a loop that would uh, iterate two times, then in order to to compare to figure out that this loop will terminate, or that i is always smaller than n, then it it can do it with unsigned. So, but with this example, we know that loop will always ter ter terminate, and we know this, and it also this is this is probably the most the most, the most important for optimi optimizations. We can safely wider this this variable to to this type, right? We can because if 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 it, if it would be unsigned, then we would have to have something called a zero extension, which is like we would have to have a different instruction, and our code will be sl slower. And with this, we can just safely do it. And with help of all that, that stuff, we can do a vectorization and it much, much simpler. I know, I know, like, for most of the cases, it's, it's actually, like, it doesn't make difference for, a, for, a, for, for this stuff. Because uh, Compare is smart enough to, to put some, uh, some checks and uh, do like uh, the branch and with OK, in this case, we are doing a vectorization, and in this case, not. But with, with this, we, c we don't have to put those branches, and it's also much, just much, much easier to reason about the code. So but let's move to some like, really, really tasty, undefined behaviors, like uh, buffer overflow, or using pointer to object of ended lifetime, or violating strict aliasing, or concussing const. Okay? Because actually, like, compiler can do really crazy stuff with this. Let's start with a buffer overflow. I, I like this example really much. So we have a table that has four elements, and we are iterating over our table and see if, if some value exists in the table. And we have, of course, like probably all of you see the bug, right? Here, we should have less than four. 
I mean, this is this is not a bug yet, but compared but with this, this this is now a bug, right? Because we are going out of the scope of the of this table. So right now, like compiler sees that and it sees like that, you know, that this operation on the on the fifth element is undefined, right? It it can't happen. So I can pick anything for this. I can, and so, but I know that it, it can't happen. So I assume that it won't gonna happen. So it means that I found the I, I found the the value before, like in the in this in the first fourth element. So it means that it's true, right? So right now we have a function like in this table we have all the integers, right? Because we had a bug in the code. This is another. I think this is my favorite example. I, I modified it a little bit. Uh, uh, so, so first we are starting with, with we are just allocating memory. Then we are calling a realloc on the same pointer, and we are putting the same amount of memory. So realloc is likely to. I, I think it's it, it's it's even guaranteed to return the same pointer, right? The, the same address. But just to make sure, we're gonna compare. Okay, if p is equal to k to q, and if so, okay, well then we're gonna put the one. We're gonna put two, and we're gonna print the values, right? And uh, if you will compile with, with Clang, then what you will get is one and two. How how did it happen, right? It's like I just have a two pointers that points to the same memory, and I put it one and two, and I have one and two in the same memory. In the same time, right? What the hell? And an explanation of this is that this this instruction is undefined behavior, and this is because this this pointer, this 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 memory that we allocated here is dead. Okay, so this this pointer is is like a zombie pointer. If we will use it, if we will reference the pointer, we will call function on it or do any stuff with this. This will be undefined behavior. So basically, C++ standard says that if you are calling realloc, then or placement new or something, so, and uh, in the same in the same memory, then the the lifetime of of, of this of this memory just ended, and uh, and because of this, and the, all the pointers that was pointing to this memory before are invalid. We cannot use this. This instruction is is surprisingly legal. Because we can always compare pointers, even if they are pointing to some old memory. So, and there, and there is also a very, uh, very funny story with that. So there is contest. Uh, the name was undefined behavior consequences, and uh, and people were just putting some random, uh, r random code to to show like, oh, well, ho ho, how compiler is crazy about undefined behavior and to do optimizations, and. Uh, one one of my friends saw this contest and said, like, oh, okay, if I would take this 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 code, then it it should do this." But he compiled with Clang and it, oh, okay, it just produces like two and two. So this this, this was boring. So he felt like, "Oh, okay, so I will write the patch in a Clang just to make it more funny." And he's, he 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 sent it code and he with note like, "Okay, but you have to compile it with the newest Clang," and he won the contest. So I, I, I think I personally think that this is like the, the Uber trolling of the compiling, like just to write patch to, to make it more funny, to make the optimization happen. Okay. Some other so I have a question for you. I have this code, I have a vector, I will reserve two elements, put two elements, and then I will take a reference. Right? And then I will push one more. And then I will check if if the address of this of 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 this reference of this of this pointer is the same uh, as the first element, and if so, I will put I will I will put 32. So the question is: Is it is it valid, or maybe it's uh, undefined behavior or unspecified behavior? Like who who thinks that this code is is com is valid? Okay, no one. Who who thinks it that it's undefined behavior? Okay, a couple of hands. Who think that? Uh, who doesn't have opinion or didn't think about it yet? One person. Okay. So the answer is that this is this is this is this is totally valid code, and this is this is tricky because I just showed you the the, the previous the previous slide. 
This is because this SED allocator doesn't call realloc. It's always allocating new memory, right? And because of this, we know that here we either will get a new memory, right? That so this won't happen, or we'll we'll have the old memory that is still valid. Okay, so at least like. A CD vector is not that broken, <laughs> okay? Okay, so when something is a good candidate to be undefined behavior, right? And Chandler talked about it like very much. I will just summarize with, you know, when when situation occurred is is considered a bug, and defining it behavior would be a performance performance loss. So, like C plus plus. Uh, uh, this is what, what I, at least I, I thought was, was, was going on. Like, if C++ standard didn't define some behaviors because they, they thought that, okay, if we will define this, then we, will have, we, we won't be able to do these optimizations. Or we won't be able to, uh, or, we, or we think that this is a bug. And, uh, and it's just much, much simpler to, to, like, to say that this is something undefined behavior than saying that, okay, in, in the worst case, it will be very, very slow. And and with this, like who, who whoever had a Stack Overflow in in their life, and who debugged Stack Overflow? Okay, not many people, surprisingly. So, like I, I heard many times, question like why I can't get nice error message? Why saying that I got Stack Overflow? Like I can program in Java, I can get the exception, like st Stack Overflow exception, but in C++ you you get a sec fault doesn't say anything, and it will be probably hard to debug. And you have to, you have to answer a very, very important question here. Okay? The, the question is, do you really want to check for each allocation, like on a, on a stack, that you are out of stack memory, like the, that, that you could just hit the heap? If so, then just go on, have your slow program, right? And if, if not, then, like, just deal with it. I mean, there is there is no good solution to this. Either we have a sl small small program, a slow program, or we have something that is much faster, and you can you have to deal with st stack overflows. But you know, at least if we if we if you are out of memory, then we'll get the SCD bad alloc, right? Right? It's like everything agrees on it on that. Like Sander says so. Okay. And actually, like if you look at the uh, Linux, Linux, then it, it's it's not always happening. So let just 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 do the experiment. Like take a 16 gigabytes uh, machine and say like, okay, I want to have uh, I don't know 20 gigabytes of memory. And then like in, in, in C++ plus will just new operator will say like, oh, okay, here you go, you have a pointer, right? And like. So I just allocated 20 gigabytes of memory, even if I have 16 gigabytes of memory. And this is because, of course, we have virtual memory. And the interesting thing is that if you allocate enough memory and you will start using the memory, then your program will cr cr crash just when, when you will iterate on the memory. Because every time you'll, uh, you'll look at the new page, like you will get to the location where, where you haven't been, then new page will be allocated. So you will just start allocating more and more memory as far as you are iterating. So you'll you'll crash during not during the allocation, but during using of memory. And this is this is pretty sucks, right? And uh, this is also why people hate exceptions, right? Because you know with with exceptions, like almost every call will generate a branch or, or like a edge. And uh, and because of this. People like to use uh, this this magic flag called F no exceptions that changes every every throw to SCD abort, and this is this is this is kind of behavior that like most 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 of the people or maybe not most of the people but some of the people like to deal with because if they have if if someone will really throw then I don't have any code to to catch it so I don't care I I just want to crash right the other solution. If you would mark every function with no accept, right, that doesn't throw any exceptions, then you would be fine. You wouldn't have any any of those problems. And uh, 
But the problem is that, of course, you have to you have to put this keyword everywhere, and programmers are lazy; they don't want to do it. And there is also other reasons, like you don't want to put a no except on a on a declaration of the function that someone is using. Like some, you are writing a library. Someone someone is using your uh, someone is using your li library. You said that okay, this 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 won't throw, right? And then one year later, you see like oh, okay. You know what? In this example, I want to draw exceptions, and you know every, everyone right now is assuming that you are not drawing, and you want to change the signature, but you can't, right? So, so this is this is not like having no accept of an every function is is a good idea. Okay, so let's talk about const. So in this example, I am initializing like in a struct. I am initializing zero here. And I, I am constructing here. I'm calling var, var. I'm calling some function. I'm calling bar. So the question is, can compiler replace it with this, right? And look that I have a const here, right? So this function should not modify b, right? And the answer is, of course, it cannot. It can do it with this one. It could do it, but with this one, there is no guarantee that there will be zero still there. After calling this 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 external function, and this is because const doesn't guarantee that none of the bits in the in the object will uh, will be will be the same. Const is, is is just a logical const. We are just saying that, okay, I am actually like logically not modifying my object, uh, but I could modify this, right? Like foo could 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 use a const cast and then change b. This, of course, would be undefined behavior. This would be a const, but it's not, right? So, so it's illegal to do uh, to do optimization because we can do a const cast, and const cast on the on the just a const reference is is okay, right? As long as the memory is not uh, const, it wasn't declared as const, then it's undefined behavior, right? So. This is this is released. This really sucks because, you know, const propagation is really awesome, and compiler have to assume that every every call could potentially call const cast on any pointer, right? So just imagine like whole words, whole, whole C plus plus word, like how 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 your program would look like, how fast it would run if if there will be this this non mutable guarantee. Just just imagine it, right? <laughs> Like so, let, let's 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 go to, the, to this to this magic world of of having a magic const, and and let's look at some example. That so, here have a function foo, and I'm calling the same uh, with the same argument, right? And it's like we are assuming that the const is we don't have any const cast. If if we have a const here, we are just giving guarantee that to the compiler that this you cannot modify this via this pointer, okay? Uh, so can we, can we, could we change it and like assume that this, is, this will be the same value here and here? Like, could, could we do this? And we cannot because why? What if this this one here is a global and the, the and the bar is actually changing the global, right? Then we actually we actually assume that okay, w like the invariant is is is. It's still okay, right? Because we said that we're not gonna modify this via this pointer, but we actually modify it in the other way. So we didn't, we, we we can't do any optimizations like this. But we can, we could probably do it on the on the color side. So if we see the construction of the object, and we are calling function with this with this object, then maybe we could assume that nothing changed. Like all the bits are the same here. Right after after calling this function, and but what about mutable? Right, do we want to have a mutable or not? And there are some problems with with mutable, uh, because if we if we say that we don't have we don't want to have any mutable, then we are actually saying that if you want to have any caching inside the inside the class, if you want to have any mutex inside the class, and someone just bound a Const reference on our object and is calling our object that we said that is it's 
uh, is calling a member function that we said that it's const, then we can't do any of this, right? We, like we we cannot do we, we can't do any any caching in, in this because we don't have immutable. And on the other hand, uh, when we have immutable, then it's it's actually much much more complicated to the compiler to reason about this, uh, because you know we, we will have to do some kind of propagation from the class. And what if someone would have a mutable to to like mutable reference or not mutable pointer to to your object inside other class, right? It's it's starting to get much more complicated. So. Like, does there, like, real const exist? And it kind of exists. Like, for example, in LVM, you can mark function with read-only. I mean, you are not actually marking functions. Like, the compiler sees that you don't modify any memory, so it will, it will just do it for you. And, uh, and there's also some other solutions. Like, if we don't deal with memory, right, if we just pass by value and return things by value, then we don't, we don't have any of those problems, because we know that someone cannot modify our object when you pass by value. But it might not work well when we don't want to copy and we want to use the object afterwise. So, but maybe the problem is somewhere else. Right? Maybe it's, it's not a const problem. Maybe it's a translation unit problem. And by the way, I just, I just, I just Google translation unit, and this is what I got. So. And so, wh why is the so? I think this is a translation unit problem. I I don't think this is a like I spent s like I spent some time trying to figure out if if const could be uh, could be somehow uh, repaired in a C plus plus or if we could just go back in time and and fix this in the, in the old standard. And actually, uh, and I actually think that this is a translation unit problem. This is the the problem of Dealing with the with the build in a C plus plus, right? That we want to do the compilation in a in a different steps, and we want to link, we want to call the function that we don't know what we are calling. So, the solution: use link time optimization. Who whoever heard about LTO? Okay, whoever used LTO. Couple of fans, and who are who are using LTO in production? No one. Okay, Chandler then. <laughs> You know, the problem is, of course, you know, do you look like a guy with 32 gigs of memory? It's like LTO takes so much memory, and it's so that's slow that nobody is no no one is want to use this. This is this is very this is a problem, and you know, you could use a fin LTO or LiPo or some other other projects. Like there there is some things in the GCC. I, I I'm pretty sure that there will be some new new stuff. And actually, like FinLTO uh, solves the problem very easily because it is it is scalable, it is incremental, and it's not that slow, and it's not it's not memory hungry. So, uh, if you want to know learn about FinLTO, then you can go to my lightning talk that was yesterday, or you could watch it on YouTube later. So, let's move to some other topic. Let's move to some to the virtual functions. And uh, like the the first thing, like if if many times if you if you talk with a C programmers, they 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 will try to tell you that there is no difference. Like they they, ha they can have the same performance on the C than in C plus plus. And I will try to give you one example why like why C plus plus is faster in in many many ways. So. One example is the virtual functions. Like, are there any differences in the C++ virtual functions and uh, like virtual functions in C? Because you can actually implement implement the same thing in a C++ by creating a like array of uh, pointers to functions and resetting the pointers and do it all on your own, right? But like, I, I don't think it's a good good. Good, good, good way to spend your time. I mean, like, if if you are trying to do a virtual function, then you should just try C++. But we know C, C programmers, right? And uh, you know, standard doesn't say like much about undefined behavior with virtual functions. And we want to get some kind of maybe for performance of the virtual functions that we cannot get in C. But it actually says much about object lifetime. And this is this is pretty much enough 
to, do, to have virtual functions in C++ that's much, much faster than in C. So let's look at this. Like, I have a, some base class, and I call the same function twice. And it, it is obvious that we cannot just replace it by call to foo multiplied by two. But the, que but the question is, is it the same foo, right? Because, I mean, can it be different foo? Like, does anyone have idea? Like, could it be, ho ho how to break it? Like, how could I change the type? Okay, I, I, I see, I, I see, I see. The, the first row, say placement new. <laughs> so, what this magic line is doing? This is a placement new. So, this doesn't allocate any memory. This is saying, okay, I want to put a type derived, I want to construct derived object inside of pointer, of this pointer, right? This is, a, this, is a, this is a memory, okay? So I'm constructing the other object inside of my object, object base. And this is legal if, I'm not, if, if I have enough memory to, to put this object. If, if, the, if the size of base is the same of size of derived, then this is completely legal. And of course, assuming that they are derived from each other. Or even, even, even no, if, 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 even if, if I'm putting some different stuff. So like... Potentially, this would call different function, right? But remember about realloc, right? There is the same thing with re realloc in, uh, as in a, as with placement new. Here we have a pointer to the to some object, and after calling this function, we would get another type. And if you would like to use this pointer, then ah, then this this will be undefined behavior, all right? Because the lifetime of this object just ended. Okay, this this is that uh, this is the dead memory. We cannot call any functions on it, and this is also why C++ functions are faster in C++ than in C. Because we can assume that this will be the same call. We don't have to load the v pointer like two times. We can do it one time and call the same function here and here. And you you might think that. Like nobody is writing code like this, right? But what about loops? If you, if if I would just call the same function in loop, then every every iteration I would have to load load v pointer, lo like uh, load v table, load pointer from this v table, and then call a function. And I just want to do it one time, right? Okay, let's let's move some some one of the last examples. So. Did this like did you know that main is just a function, right? You can you can call main and okay, you actually cannot. So standard explicitly says that function main is is special. Okay? You cannot call it, you cannot take address of it. And th there is some reasons for that. Okay? This is this program like if, if you put it in a compiler, it actually will allow it. It 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 won't gonna warn about like you are calling main you are doing undefined behavior, but there might be some optimization based on that. This is not like we are just trying to be oh okay just main is special don't call it, because if we know that main is w w that no one can call main, that means that main is not recursive, and we know that main is the first function that is called right. I mean like that starts calling other functions, so. With this, we know that even if we would just call some bunch of functions there, we won't get to the main again. And this, this might be uh, very important for some, some programs, because when we initialize some global memory, then we can assume that when we are starting using it in the main, we, we have it as initialized before, right? If, if we would just call main, like we could call main, then we would, wouldn't have any assumption. And for example, in LVM, there is attribute uh, on the main that says uh, that it's not recursive. And optimizations like optimization passes like global op opt are using it. Okay. Who likes uh, SCD move and, and, uh, and unique pointers? Everyone sees a bug? Right? So th this bug is like, you know, we are moving it here. Like the value of the p is null here, so we are the referencing null pointer, right? We are trying to put 42 in the address zero. And th this is this is kind of thing that 
you, you, you could just not see in your code. I mean, with the with the pointers, you will, it will be just very, very easy, right? You just, oh, you have a pointer here, you will have new, then we would say that p equals to zero, p2 equals to p, or in the other way, and then we would reference null pointer, right? And maybe compiler would also warn you about this, but if we have this, we construct object, we use the move semantics, then the everything is, is hiding in the in the barrier of the functions. So it needs it needs inlining to, to figure it out. And it actually will figure it out, but not in a in the front end. It will figure it out in the in the optimizer, in the in the middle end. So it will see that, hmm, okay. So I have the null pointer here. This is undefined behavior. So I know that I can pick any implementation that I want, right? I can do anything here. So I can just get rid of everything that is after this line, because I know that I won't gonna be here, right? So it will do like this. And then it will see, oh, okay, I have pointer P2 that I'm not using anywhere. So I will remove this. And I know that std move doesn't do anything. This is casting, right? It's, it's not some special function that destroys P, right? So I, I will remove this, and I will remove P. And then I have allocation that I'm no longer using. And then I have this, right? You you can you can I, I check this like if if you will compile it with Clang you will get uh, empty function if you will compile it with GCC then you the, you uh, only get uh, like allocation because GCC doesn't know how to uh, deal with uh, unused allocation and like th this this might sound reasonable uh, uh, to someone but to some people not right like, what I mean wh why did why I can just remove code when it's a null pointer, right? It's, it, it doesn't seem to be a same thing. And uh, it's, uh, it's actually pretty important in optimizations because if if you have some external calls and we will just figure it out that, okay, this, this, this code is unreachable because we know that we have a pointer that is set to null and we are trying to dereference that. So it will be undefined behavior. So we can just get rid of this code and like we could have just perfectly valid code in some part of the of the code would find that the optimizer would, would find out that we are doing some undefined behavior and it would just assume that we are not doing and everything would be fine. But in the cases and you know in the cases like this we are have we have two pointers, we are trying to put forty two and fifty five. Right? And like here we can assume that P is not null, right? Because we just reference pointer here. So because of this, we know that I, I can just transform it to false, so I won't write any memory to, to, to that, right? I can just get rid of this. But things get, things get more interesting if I firstly check, right? And then if, if P is set to null, then I, I will, uh, I'll write 52. Because this is, this is before, right? And actually, we can do the same thing. We can just get rid of this. Because we know that even if, like, if p would be magically set to, to null here, and we would put 52 here, then we will still go to, to this line, and it will cause undefined behavior. So we know that this is undefined behavior, right? Uh, this would be undefined behavior. It will be null, so we can get rid of this, this branch also. So as you can see here, then undefined behavior can also work in the other direction. It, it's not only like going backwards. It can also go upwards. This is just a consequence of, of, of assuming that something won't happen and then propagating it. And with that, I, I'm happy to answer all, all the questions. I hope there will be many questions regarding the optimizations. So thank you. Um, uh, my question is about the consequences of removing code that the programmer wrote. Mm -hmm. Because removing this code uh, suddenly opens up a huge uh, space of new states a program can be in that would be impossible if the code wasn't removed. So it creates huge uh, security vulnerabilities. It can produce some. That's right. So, so my question is, is the performance really the king? Or is there some middle ground we should... Mm, we should find to and limit the amount of propagation 
of the undefined behavior uh, that we do to, to somehow contain and make um, it easier to reason about the code and our bugs, because all programs have bugs, we know that. Mm -hmm. Of course. So, uh, so I. Okay, so, you know, of course you can always compile with dash O2, and we won't do any optimizations like this. We won't get remove your code, and of course, oh, you can, uh, I, I could say that you can always use uh, some older compiler that don't do some fancy stuff. And of course, this is this is a this is a problem. Like you could you could have undefined behavior in your code. You you could not know about this, and then your code like in in some part of the code that you, for example, you're not testing, you could have something very very weird happening. And uh, I maybe maybe Chandler will, will, will correct me, but I I think that removing stuff like this, like just just by assuming that something did not happen, it's it's pretty important, especially where you are doing uh, much of the inlining. Right, you just remove the boundaries that you didn't see before, and now you see that some code is dead, right? Because you want to remove the uh, code that is dead, and you can assume that this code is dead because this would be undefined behavior. And one of the things that you could do is you could say that okay, I don't I don't want to remove a code, assuming uh, uh, assuming on the like assuming that something won't happen, right? That's looking at undefined behavior, and there probably might be a flag for this. I'm not really sure, but I guess the much better question is just using a, a undefined behavior sanitizer that will find you uh, undefined beha behaviors in your code. Uh, I'm not really sure how uh, how slow is uh, UBSAN. Uh, like Chandler, maybe. Yeah, Chandler says that's ten ten percent. So if you if you like you know you could you could either. Uh, you could either have code that is ten percent uh, slower with undefined behavior sanitizer that checks for everything. It also could, of course, it could have some bugs, but or you could uh, um, you could not use the uh, optimizations. You could also use the CFI that would uh, get rid of some stuff connected to the security. I'm not sure how Clang is, uh, like how LVM is uh, is is it removing code. Based on undefined behavior, if if you are in the CFI mode, so yeah, I may, maybe it makes sense to have some flag in the in the compiler. But if you want to get the performance, then we unfortunately have to do kind of stuff like this. Thank you very much. This was Piotr Padlewski.